Okay, so wonderful good afternoon everyone. So I welcome you to my YouTube channel presenting before you this wonderful lesson is your tutor and your mentor, um, Peter Clement. And to those of you that have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, just make sure that you subscribe. You also hit the like button and also don't forget to share to others so that you'll be able to learn everything together. Okay, so I do have some interesting practice questions on work, uh, energy and power. Okay, so uh, to those of you that are, if you know you, you are trying, just make sure that you solve this in advance, then I will be able to mark you and see if what you've done is very much correct. So we have uh, a question here saying, starting from rest, a 5 kg block slides 2.5 meters down a rough 30, meter, 30 degrees incline. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the incline is uh, 0 0.436. Then they're saying we determine the work done by the force of gravity. We determine the work done by the force of gravity. Okay, so I think I do have uh, some solution here. Let's get started. So, okay. So, this is A. Okay. So, for this question, first of all, we have to draw a diagram. Okay, we have to do a, a diagram, a free body diagram. So, the free body diagram is going to look like this. We just pick a small one, like this. This free body diagram is going to help us uh, imagine everything as it is in the question. Okay, so we're going to imagine that um, there is a block, there is a block that is sliding on this incline. Okay, there is a block which is sliding on this incline. Now, we can imagine that this block is simply sliding in this direction, in this direction. Okay, so we can simply say this is the force that is acting on this uh, uh, in, on this block so that it may move in this direction okay at the same time we know that there is a force due upward which was simply calling as z the fn or the normal force at the same time we know that there is a force acting this side and this force is such that it wants this block to continue in motion in this direction Okay, and we can simply call this force as the uh, kinetic friction force. Kinetic friction force. Okay, then we can simply display our data here. We write our data. Now, right in our data, we have been given an angle theta of, an angle theta of, they are saying this is 30.0 degrees. Then they are saying we have been given a mass of 5.0 kg. Then they are saying some length or some distance that we have been given is simply 2.5 meters. Then we have been given the mu k. Mu k has been given to be 0 0.43. Uh, six okay now they want us to find we know that there is also another force acting downward which we're calling as the mg now they want us to find the work done by the force of gravity so work done we know that the work done by the force of gravity is simply given by the force okay the force cosine the angle multiplied by some distance whichever formula that you can use this also applies okay now we know that the force that is acting due down what is simply the mg so this can also be written as the, uh, the 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 work done by gravity is simply equal to the mg cosine the angle theta the distance like this okay 
Now, if you check, our angle theta has been given to be 60. Sorry, uh, to be 30 rather, 30. But then we want to calculate some angle uh, which is uh, uh, acting because if you check, you are able to see that there is this force which is acting downward here, which we are calling as the mg, okay? The mg, but then there is also a force which is acting in this direction. So we cannot take 30 degrees as our angle theta. Instead, we are going to calculate because we know that this is 90 degrees, 90 degrees, so we have to calculate some angle considering this one. So how do we calculate that angle? Very simple. We will just say x plus 30 is equal to the total angle, which is 90. Then we are going to say uh, x is equal to 90 minus 30, and we are going to have a skiste degrees. Therefore, this is the angle that we're going to use. So we're going to say the work done by gravity is given by what is M? M was given to be the mass. Uh, it was 5. So I'll just replace in the values. Then this is 9.8. Okay, cosine the angle theta, which is kiste. Okay, then everything by the distance. What was the distance? It was simply 2.5. Okay, so when you calculate everything, you discover that the work done by gravity is going to be 61.3 joules. Okay, let me try to. Okay, very correct answer. So that is the answer. Okay. We get to, to B. B, they are simply saying, the work done by the friction force between block and incline, the work done by the friction force between, uh, uh, um, between the block and the incline. So this one is very simple as well. It's very simple. Okay, so this one we'll call it B. B. Now, how do we calculate B? They are simply saying the work done by the friction force, uh, the work done by the friction force between block and incline. Okay. So what we are going to do is this. We know that the work done, we know that the work done is simply given by, the work done by the uh, kinetic friction force. Okay. It is simply, okay, let's just write the normal formula. It is simply the force cosine the angle theta multiplied by some distance. But in this case, we have been taught that some force we are dealing with is the kinetic friction force. So I'll put my Fk here, then cosine the angle theta multiplied by some distance, everything. We know that the Fk is equal to mu k multiplied by some normal force. Okay, meaning while there is Fk in the equation, I can replace with new k with this expression, with this equation here. Okay, not an expression, but an equation. So everything by cosine theta. Okay, then the distance here. Okay, then from here, from here, what are we supposed to do? From here, what are we supposed to do? Now we know that this guy here, the normal force, remember in my previous video I told you that the normal force is equal to the mg cosine of the angle theta. So in other words, I can also replace what there is this n with this expression. Therefore the work done is going to equal to some new k, then n is simply the mg cosine of the angle theta then cosine theta, then some distance. We can replace in the values. What is the new k? The new k is simply 0 0.436. What is the m? m? m, the mass, which happens to be the mass, is simply 5. Then gravity is simply 9.8. Uh, what else do we have? Then we have some cosine. Now, what angle are we supposed to put here? It is simply the 30. 
okay, because we are considering uh, 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 the normal force. So we just take the original uh, thing that we have. Now, for this part, the angle is going to change. Okay, the angle is going to change. And the reason as to why the angle is going to change is because we are finding the, uh, the, the force by the, the work done by the kinetic friction force. So meaning the angle we consider is simply this angle or this angle, okay, which, is, which happens to be 90 degrees. So therefore, this is going to be a 90 degrees, 90 degrees like this. Then you also put some 2.5 here so that you can multiply everything by this some distance now when you check when you check if you multiply everything okay let's see what we're going to get okay if you multiply everything there you will get something like the work done will equal to negative four six point three joules okay you will get something like this so this is your answer this is your answer okay this is your answer let's go to C C they are saying that the work done by the normal force they want us to find the work done by the normal force the work done by the normal force. Okay. Okay, so this is this this is not possible. Okay. I'm sure you've seen the correction. Okay, how do I know that it's not supposed to be this? Is because the the, the was is the, the, the work done by the kinetic friction force is simply this force in this direction then there is also this force in this direction so if you check like I drew here we consider this angle we also consider this angle from here up to here it is 180 degrees that's the reason as to why you put 180 degrees there and it will give you that answer for the second part they want us to find the work done by the normal force work done by the normal force Okay, so same, same concept, we will say the work done is equal to, I'm sure this we know by now, is simply the force cosine theta uh, some distance, like this. Now they want us to find the work done by the normal force. So in other words, work done by the normal force, we are going to put the normal force here, which is simply the Fn cosine theta some distance okay so we know that the normal force is equal to the mg cosine the angle theta it simply means that where there is the fn i can replace with this so that it becomes the mg cosine the angle theta then it cosine theta then some distance i'm sure you have seen how i have done this it's quite very simple now for this one uh, we can replace everything in here and our mass was 5, 9.8 cosine the angle of course is 30 then we are going to have uh, something like cos we are going to have cosine now for the angle what angle do we use what angle do we use remember we are considering uh, this angle we are considering this angle only this angle from here to here which happens to be 90 degrees so for this one we are only considering 90 degrees so i'm going to put my 90 degrees here then i'm going to multiply everything by some distance d okay then from here you discover that if you punch everything you are going to have the work done equal to some zero joules now, why get a zero? Uh, why get zero joules? It's because of uh, this um, cosine ninety here. Okay. Okay. So now let's go to D. D is simply saying. Okay. So this one just use the concept 
saying qualitatively, how would the answers change if a shorter ramp at a steeper angle were used to span the same vertical height? Okay, uh, same vertical height. Okay, so for this one, I think I'll just give you the answer. But to, if you want to prove everything, of course, you can go and prove. But I know that when I solve my questions, I discover that the work done due to gravity will remain to remain the same. Remain, work done due to gravity will remain the same. Okay, then work done by work done by by normal force. will decrease. Okay, so this is how simple this is. You just have to understand, of course, why do, how do I know the work done by the normal force will decrease? Of course, you are able to see that work done by the normal force is simply uh, zero joules. Then this work done, uh, the work done by the gravitational field force, of course, it increased but it won't continue increasing. Remember that the work done is maintained at some point, 9.8. So you expect it to remain the same almost everywhere. Okay, you expect it to remain the same almost everywhere. Let's get to question two. Okay, so question two, where are we? We get to question two. So question two is simply saying a tension force of 175 newtons inclined at 20 degrees above the horizontal is used to pull a 40 kg parking crate a distance of 6 meters on a rough surface. If the crate moves at a constant speed, find the work done by the tension force. Ah. Okay, so we have another interesting question here. Ah, it's very interesting and very simple, I know, of course, but very involving. <laughs> Uh, like I always say, we draw some diagram, of course, to make everything easy. So, a tension force of 175 newtons. So, for it, for it to have a tension force, it means we must have two in uh, two boxes, of course. Okay, we must have two. Uh, 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 what's this? Two boxes that are being put, or two crates that are being put at some distance, six meters. So, of course, we are going to have the first crate. Okay, let's imagine that this is the surface where the crates are lined on. Okay, this is the ground. We imagine that this is the surface, the ground, of course. Let's imagine that this is our surface, okay? Now, upon imagining this, we can simply say we have our crate one here, then we can have crate two here. Now, let's imagine that, of course, these two, there is some tension force just in here, okay, in this line, there is tension force in here. Now, they are connected by, by here, but the person who is pulling this thing is trying to pull it at this point. And then we have been told that the force this person is using is simply 175 newtons. Then we have been told that this box is simply 40 kg. Now, this person is putting this thing in the horizontal at some point, 20 degrees. Now they are asking us to find the work done by the tension force. So work done by the tension, I think we have done a lot of some formulas. We know what the work done is. Work done is equal to the F. Of course, you can, if you want, you can write it like this, just one and the same. Those of you who are studying, you know what I mean. Now, the work done is simply equal to, or those of you that follow me, you know what I mean? This is just one and the same. Those of you that are studying what I'm teaching, you are following me, you know what I mean. Of course, the force that we have is simply 175. The distance given, okay, what is the distance? It's simply 6.0, 6.00 meters. That's the distance from this point up to this point. Okay, so we can put our six here, then we can say cosine the angle. What is the angle? Of course, our angle is simply 20 degrees. 
the work done of course is going to equal to if you punch everything at the same time it should give you nine eight six point six seven seven jobs okay so this is how interesting this question was let me try all right good we get to the second part the second part they are simply asking us to, to find the same the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and surface coefficient of kinetic friction okay so we know that first of all i think by now calculate b i think by now you know that fk or the kinetic friction force is simply equal to some uk multiplied by the normal force okay you know I, i'm sure by now you know this formula so we want to calculate this mu k so you can just say over the normal force over the normal force if you punch everything mu k is equal to fk over n so we, we don't have fk so we have to calculate it so now how do we calculate it of course when you check the diagram there is what is as this person is trying to pull this thing in this direction you discover that there is a force trying to pull this thing this side which we're calling as the fk at the same time there is a a a a, a, a vector force of this guy in the x which is simply f because in the x i'm sure by now you know this is f cosine theta okay f cosine theta that is in the x so that it opposes this force okay so we can simply say that um, summation summation of all forces in the x is equal to zero because this thing is stationary okay meaning zero is equal to now let's bring out the forces we bring out all the forces so the first force is this one which are uh, which i have outlined which is a vector force in the x of this guy so it's going to be force f cosine uh, the angle theta minus the kinetic friction force therefore we can simply say that the kinetic friction force is equal to f cosine the angle theta like this then from here we can say the fk is equal to what is the force it is 175 cosine then what is the angle of course the angle is simply 20 like this 20 okay so that is our fk of course we can keep it let's also try to bring down the forces in the in the y Dimension of all forces in the y because we know that in the y that is when we can that is where we can find the normal force we also need the normal force here but the normal force is simply found in the y this direction okay the normal force so the normal force is found in the y so we can uh, break this down by simply calculating the summation of all forces in the y so again summation of all forces in the y is equal to uh, the normal force itself which is the fn minus some mg because we know that there is some gravity opposing this okay plus the f sine uh, uh theta where is this f sine theta coming from remember we are we are using a component of this force in the y okay so it is simply a sine theta we have something like this from here we know that uh this fn if we if we make it the subject we're going to have the mg minus f sine theta so therefore fn is equal to if we replace in everything what is the for, what is the the mass it is simply a 40 kg 9.8 minus this is going to be 17 okay this is going to be 175 sine 30 so sine sine 20 then everything if you punch everything you calculate you discover that you're going to have three three two point one four six newtons okay 
146 newtons. If you punch everything at the same time. All right, try to pull. Need to redo my work. Okay, good. We have found the Fn, we have found the Fk. Now let's find the mu k. To find the mu k, of course, we say mu k is equal to, we can get this, ex this expression and simply replace it. So we say 175 cosine 20 over 3, 3, 2.146. New K, of course, if you punch everything in there. Mm. Let me try to repunch this. Okay, if you punch everything well, you will discover that you're going to have a zero point uh, four nine five. Okay, so this is how you do this question. Quite very simple and very interesting. So this is how you solve this particular question. For the third question, I think the third question is the simplest. Of course, they are saying that a seven point eight bullet moving at 575 meters per second penetrates a tree trunk to depth of 5.5 centimeters. Okay, so for this one, um, let me just write the data first of all. So let's try to first of all draw a free body diagram. Okay, free body diagram. So this is a bullet. This is the gun, first of all. Then we're told that this person fires a bullet, and then this bullet. This is the bullet. And this bullet, does it penetrates a tree. Okay, so let's imagine this is a tree. Okay, so when this bullet enters the tree, it will penetrate the tree and still continue in its state of motion. Inertia, remember? It so desires to keep itself in motion, meaning the angle at which it penetrated the tree trunk is simply a 180 degrees. Okay, so let's write our data. I think I'll, I'll, I'll just outline everything so that you can make sense from this. We have been given this velocity, of course, to be 575 meters per second. We have been given the mass to be 7.8. So this 7.8 is in grams. So take it in kgs. You take it in kg. Then we have been given the distance, which is the depth of 5.5 centimeters. You take it in meters. If you watch my videos, of course, you know how to convert this. They are saying, now look at this, they are saying, what is the elastic potential energy of the, wait, wait a minute, we're on question three, they're saying, we use work, they're saying we use work and energy. In physics, when they say use work and energy, they want you to make a relationship. They want you to create a relationship between work and energy. Okay, they want you to create that good relationship between work and energy. So for work, we know that work done, the work done is simply equal to F cosine the angle theta some distance. We know that the energy, okay, the energy of course, how do we do it? The energy, which is the net, uh, what is the, the net work done? Sure, by now you know, you've seen this formula, those of you that are studying good books, college physics, 
you've seen this formula, the network energy done, uh, the, work, uh, the, the net work done is simply equal to Ke at some point final minus Ke at some point initial. Okay? So now we create that good relationship between the two. So to create a relationship, what we mean is we are going to get F cosine the angle theta sum D, then equate it to K E final minus K E initial, like this. From here we can say F cosine the angle theta sum T equal to, this is going to be kinetic energy is simply 1 over 2 mv squared final minus 1 over 2 mv squared initial like this from here they want us to calculate the find the average friction force the friction for which is this guy here so we can just divide everything by cosine the angle theta everything by cosine the angle theta then we cancel this side and our force is going to equal to 1 over 2 mv final mv final squared minus 1 over 2 mv the power 2 then everything divided by cosine the angle theta okay so this is the formula to use it's very simple. You can just insert everything that is here in the formula. Of course, uh, you know you have this, the initial velocity, of course, you have it. The final is zero. Uh, uh, the, the mass is simply that. The, 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 the distance, of course, the distance, you already have it. This distance, you simply use it to calculate uh, the second question because the second question is simply asking you, saying, uh, uh, they are saying, assuming friction force is constant determine how much time elapses they want you to find the time it means when you use those formulas for newtons uh, 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 those uh, laws of mo those formulas for motion you should apply them using the distance then automatically you'll be able to find these other things so this is how simple this work has been so i'm going to leave this question the last one for you are going to do this question applying the same concept that I've used. So question four, you you will do this question, this entire question, and make sure that you inbox me on WhatsApp, of course, using these contacts. You inbox me there and I'll be able to respond to you. So I'm sure you've enjoyed the lesson. Otherwise, I love you all. Don't forget to subscribe and share to others and also to like because uh, it really helps me to notice how many students are, le are learning from this channel. Don't also forget to comment because I like it when you post the views in there so that I get to respond to you. Otherwise, I love you guys, study hard and make sure that you prepare adequately for tests from whichever country you are from. Shalom, shalom.